We're all familiar with the name Jessica Lynch. Her story saturated the news soon after the U.S. invaded Iraq. She was captured as her army unit was ambushed on its way to Baghdad. Almost two weeks later, grainy night vision video shows how U.S. soldiers carried her out of an Iraqi hospital. And soon fictional accounts of her experiences were leaked to the media by unnamed government sources. It's these accounts that put Jessica Lynch in the spotlight once again last week. She testified at a congressional hearing. The topic was misinformation from the battlefield. Lynch is still confused why the U.S. government sensationalized and lied about her horrific experience in Iraq. She spoke to Emily Corio about what this all means in her life today. Jessica Lynch enrolled in the Army in July of 2001. She left for basic training a week after 9-11. She was scared. She knew war was likely in her future. But she was also young, eager, and as she puts it, ready for the opportunity and the adventure that Army life presented. She would never be ready for what happened on March 23, 2003. Following the ambush, my injuries were extensive. When I awoke the Iraqi hospital, I was not able to move or feel anything below my waist. I suffered a six-inch gash in my head. The, my fourth and fifth lumbar were overlapping, causing pressure on my spine. My right humerus was broken. My right foot was crushed. My left femur was shattered. The Iraqis in the hospital tried to help me by removing the bone and replacing it with a 1940s rod that was made for a man. Following my rescue, the doctors at Launstuhl, Germany, found in a physical exam that I had been sexually assaulted. Today, I still continue to deal with bowel, bladder, and kidney problems as a result from the injuries. My left leg still has no filling from the knee down, and I'm required to wear a brace just to stand and walk. When I awoke, I did not know where I was. I could not move. I could not call for help. I could not fight. Back in the U.S., the story of Jessica Lynch's capture and rescue was incredible. A Washington Post article quoted a U.S. official as saying Lynch was firing her weapon until she ran out of ammunition and that she continued firing at the Iraqis even after she sustained multiple gunshot wounds. She was fighting to the death. She did not want to be taken alive, the official said. The news brought the media to Work County in droves and turned Jessica Lynch into an American war hero. I've read thousands of stories that said when I was captured, I said, I'm an American soldier too. Those stories were right. Those were my words. I am an American soldier too. So thank you for this welcome, and it's great to be home. But other parts of the news reports, like the Washington Post article mentioned earlier, were lies. When Lynch was discharged from the Army, she tried to set the record straight. Four years later, she was on Capitol Hill, telling her story once again. When I remember those difficult days, I remember the fear. I remember the strength. I remember that hand of that fellow American soldier reassuring me that I was going to be okay. At the same time, tales of great heroism were being told. At my parents' home in Work County, West Virginia, it was understaged by media, all repeating the story of the little girl Rambo from the hills of West Virginia who went down fighting. It was not true. I have repeatedly said when asked that if the stories about me helped inspire our troops and rally a nation, then perhaps there was some good. However, I'm still confused as to why they chose to lie and try to make me a legend when the real heroics of my fellow soldiers that day were legendary. People like Lori Paestua and First Sergeant Dowdy, who picked up fellow soldiers in harm's way, or people like Patrick Miller or Sergeant Donald Walters, who actually did fight until the very end. The bottom line is the American people are capable of determining their own hero ideals for heroes, and they don't need to be told elaborate lies. What do you think Americans should do with this information, basically that 
um, they were getting misinformation. Mm -hmm. how, how do you help people respond to that? How they respond, they could take it, you know, several different ways. But, you know, the main thing is that obviously from now on we're going to have to be careful what information we do receive, you know, not only from the military but from the media and just kind of, you know, sort it out first and really understand what is going on before we can really take the information and run with it. And, you know, it, it's happened before and it'll probably happen again. Misinformation, it, it gets out there and it leads to different stories and keeps going like that until it's a big hyped up situation such as minor Pat Tillman's. Mm -hmm. Overall, how does that make you feel about your government? Um, you know, it's, those are the people that you want to believe. If you can't believe your government, who can you really believe? You know, those are high important officials and you want to believe what information they are giving you. So it's kind of like, well, if you can't believe them, who, who are you really supposed to believe? Mm -hmm. And what do you think of that? Yeah, it's just, it's kind of, you know, sad. I mean, because it's, you, you definitely, <laughs> deep down you want to believe what people are saying. And I think that's what happened with my situation, my story. People wanted to believe that this was the truth, even though it was far exaggerated and it sounded so cool and <laughs> and unbelievable that, you know, a 19-year-old girl would go over there and kill all these Iraqis and come out looking like the hero. But it's, you know, it's just, you really got to kind of be careful of what, <laughs> what you take away from, from stories. And make sure that they're accurate. And, and so it's, it's sad that they want to make up stories and because now it's kind of hard to believe them. Does it upset you to think about how the story was initially told and the hype around it? It did at first, um, but now, you know, it's okay with me. I'm four years later, like we just said, and I've kind of moved on. I have a daughter. My life has evolved out. Like, I, I've transitioned myself, and even though I'll still be known as a prisoner of war, and probably always will be for the rest of my life. That's who people will recognize me as. Well, I have questions that still surround my whole ordeal that I have no idea about. Uh, the military won't tell me or it's still sketchy. But, you know, it's I'm here, I'm healthy, I'm alive. At least that's, that's some more than, you know, like Pat Tillman. He didn't get the opportunity to come back home and at least set the record straight. So, you know, at least I'm thankful for that. What are some of the things you still want to know that you're having trouble finding out? Really just what what happened, <laughs> everything about it, what happened. Not really about the rescue because I was awake for that, I know. But um, the two hours that I was unconscious, you know, there's a whole ordeal. And, and I really don't want to get into it, but there's a lot that's still unanswered that, you know, they believed I was shot and then I wasn't and there's still no reports of whether I really was or I wasn't um, stabbed same thing you know there's just a whole ordeal about questions I mean I need answers to but for now I, I'm not worried about them mm -hmm. one day I, I do want to know but you know, for now it's I'm just grateful to be alive has anyone told you why maybe you're not getting those answers that you want um Maybe because we haven't really pushed to know the answers, you know, because for the longest time it was about healing to me, you know. I wanted to push everything in the back of my mind, not think about it, not just not live that life anymore. Like I wanted to move on and, and go to school and, you know, now have my daughter. And so it's kind of like I pushed it in the back of my mind so I didn't, didn't really pursue the answers. And, you know, one day I, I would like to know what really happened. Mm-hmm.